You either love them or you hate them. It's time to talk about the Daytona Road Cars. The Daytona Pro Course. Whether you like it, you are in the middle about it, or you just absolutely hate them. And I've expressed my opinions about the Daytona Road Course, all road courses in general, in the past. You know, I'm one of those people that really just in the middle. I don't love them on any stretch, and I'm probably on the verge of hating them because they just aren't generating the type of racing that I want to see week in, week out doing it. So let's break down this race. Now let's start off with stage number one. Chase Elliott takes the pole and right off the bat second place starter Michael McDowell who won the Daytona 500 later we'll, last week. We'll get to him a little bit later. Takes the corner out wide and this will become a theme of the day. Of course it starts in the first lap. Chase Elliott dominates this race for dominates this race for almost the whole entire thing. Taken to the lead taking control of the pack and as soon as he did that there was really no catching him. There was a few incidents where other people took the lead. Of course, stage two, Denny Hamlin was able to win stage number two. But really, it was the Chase Elliott show, as it is. He's probably the closest thing to Jeff Gordon on these road courses. You know, he has won every single one until now, basically. He didn't win the Clash that he was in, so that counts. He lost to Kyle Busch, but he almost won it. And he lost today, and he was very close to winning it. We'll get to that coming up really shortly. No matter what your opinions are, stage two, Denny Hamlin, who I think is second best at these road courses right now, was able to get it. Kurt Busch led this race for a while in stage number three until wrecking from the lead. Yes, Kurt Busch wrecked from the lead. This race track brought extreme challenges to the NASCAR field. But really, after that incident, we didn't see much. Chase Elliott soared to lead. Two seconds behind him is Christopher Bell, and that's just how it went for a while until rain started in the corner. And NASCAR decided that they deemed this rain. Now, by the rule book, it says that this rain caution does not come out unless they deem it as unsafe conditions and they think that the NASCAR teams are going to want to put on rain tires. NASCAR threw the rain caution. And no matter what you think, I think, yeah, I honestly think NASCAR threw it because they needed more exciting racing. And isn't that sad to say? This race was just boring to me. I mean, I watched it. The best road course races to me is when you have side-by-side -side action, through the corners from for first place, it's gonna get a little iffy. And but I like having it second, third, and I like when it came down. I like the style of finish that we had today on road courses because that to me makes a heck of a road course race. But we didn't have that, and we we ha didn't have that all week, and that's the problem I think we're running into right now. That's the problem that I think we're going to be running into with these seven road course races that NASCAR is experiencing with. You know, they're trying these new things, but NASCAR already today thought that the first of the seven, of the eight, excuse me, was not good enough. They needed to throw a caution out. I'm glad they threw the caution out because the end and piece of this race was excited, not the wrecks. The wrecks and the chaos was absolutely terrible. I don't watch NASCAR for wrecks, and there's a good 
point of NASCAR fan set, do watch it for the wrecks. And I don't like when NASCAR tries to appeal to that fan base. They're, yeah, they're part of your fan base. And NASCAR, part of NASCAR is the crashes. But I don't like when NASCAR throws a caution because they want to appeal to that audience. That audience is just there to see people potentially get hurt. Not, not that's what they want to do, but... They don't want to see people get hurt, but they want to see wrecks. They want to see fiery crashes, and they want to see the person get out. But that can't always ha that Nowadays, this can happen, but back a while ago, that couldn't. And road course races, to me, the fact of the matter that NASCAR needed to do that led me to believe that they weren't confident in this race's reviews if they didn't have an exciting finish. They knew that if they threw a caution, the field would bunch up five wide through the corners, spins out. That's what they wanted to see. They wanted to see people spinning out from the lead. They wanted to see all this. Well, they got it. And the finish was absolutely stunning. The person that I did not want to see the race at all, did not want to see win the race at all, was Joey Logano, and he didn't. My second favorite driver. Now, I have Kyle Busch. He's my leader. He's my favorite driver in NASCAR, and that's just... That's just the way it is. Kyle Busch, my favorite. He will be until he retires. But when he does retire, Christopher Bell is a really close second. I think he's an awesome driver. But we'll talk about him in winter spotlight for this week. But anyway, yeah, it was awesome to see. And I'm happy for Christopher. I'm happy for Joe Gibbs, who swept this weekend. Toyota swept this weekend. They had a, a truck win on Friday on KBM. Ben Ro No, not KBM. Ben Rhodes, they switched to Toyota this year, and they got a win. So they had, it was awesome, awesome, awesome for Toyota. Of course, Joe Gibbs' grandson, Ty Gibbs, won. And, of course, we see this weekend, Christopher Bell with his first career win, two first careers uh, in the last few, the last two races, shaping up to be the best season ever. Ha ha, ha ha, sorry, Fox. But, yeah, that was, it was a good race, exciting finish. Not good race, exciting finish. And that's why when we get to hit the gas or hit the brakes, I have to make a pretty decision um, that you guys might like or you might hate. But anyway, that is the race breakout. Now, do I agree with the caution that they threw? No. I like to see races play out, but I don't think Christopher Bell was chase catching Chase Elliott. I'm going to be a realist. And I'm happy they put the caution out because it added some excitement to this race. Let's get to today's finishing results. The winner of today's race was Christopher Bell, able to drive through the field uh, and be, really was running top five really all night. You know, he had a good car and towards the end he proved that he had a good car by driving that thing to victory lane after passing Joey Logano in the front stretch chicane. More coming up on him later. Joey Logano finished second, of course. Car just really didn't seem to have much for him. Kurt uh, Denny Hamlin in third, not, as I said, one of the best road course racers out there right now. Chase Elliott being the best, but he's definitely a close third. Was able to drive all the way back to fourth place after maybe some strategy played into that fourth place for Kurt. But all in all, great. After wrecking from the lead, finishing fourth, it was a great comeback. It shows a championship team right there that can battle through adversity. We'll see how he goes the rest of the season. Brad finished fifth. The Kudlowski, Kevin Harvick in sixth. AJ Allmendinger maybe redeeming himself a little bit from that Cine series race last night. Finished seventh. You know, everyone talks about him in a road course race. And I, a great point was mentioned the other night. I was watching a live stream from a NASCAR YouTuber. And a great point was brought up from you guys, the NASCAR fans. AJ Allmendinger isn't a real good road racer. And I thought of it and I said, yeah, the media always jumped on him when he was a, when he was racing. You know, they always jumped on him to be one of the best racers there is. And then after a while, the media started to jump on him because he runs well at Martinsville. And the first thing I thought of is, wow, well, maybe he'll actually do good in road courses. He does run good in road courses, but I think he's also in some better equipment. And that might be why he finished 7th, McDowell and 8th. Hey! Won the Daytona 500 his first race. Finished 8th at a road course. What's going to happen next week at Homestead? Priest in 9th. Bowman finished 10th. Chris Busher in 11th. Martin Truex Jr. in 12th. Wrecked, but wrecked towards the end of this race. Not a wreck, but now, but still. Nice to see him drive through the field. Cole Custer in 13th. Eric Jones in 14th. 43. Top 15. 
see how that team can do later. Ryan Blaney in 15th. And Daniel Suarez with a top 20 finish in 16th place. Could have had to do with a lot of those last lap little debacles. But I'm still going to clap for that. Eric Amarola in 17th. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in 18th. Ty Dillon with a top 10 in 19th. And Ryan Newman in 20th. Those are your top 20. Soak them in. Give them a good look. Think about them for a second. These are your top 20 for this week's edition of the NASCAR Road Course. And look at them because they might matter. And I believe Michael McDowell is number one on the points right now. As much as that doesn't matter, playoffs are wild on the road. But I just want to say that he is probably, I think right now, uh, number one on that list. All right, guys, let's transition into winner spotlight. Today's winner was the one, the only, Christopher Bell. First start, second start in for Joe Gibbs Racing. He's, he's, he's run pretty decent in the Xfinity Series at a row. He has one Xfinity Series road course win. He has run extremely good at the... He, he was running really good at the Daytona 500 until he was believed to cause that lap 15 wreck. I don't think he caused it. Go check out my Daytona 500 review. I will talk about that in a little while as well. Uh, no, that's I talk about all of that stuff in the Daytona 500 there. I'll do this every week, by the way. We'll talk about the race. But... Christopher Bell, overall, great win. His first career cup win, awesome. He Sadly, less personnel. His wife couldn't be there, but he is excited that he won. I don't blame him. You know, he won one of the best Xfinity Series drivers I've seen in a while. And moving into cup, a lot of eyes were on him, of course, on that 95. And then that 95 team had to shut down. And then, boom, in his second year in cup, he got a great opportunity, a golden opportunity, with Joe Gibbs Racing, where he was able to surpass almost all expectations and win. Now, what's what's your expectations for him in the near future? What do you want to see from Christopher Bell? Another win this year? I did. I said that team would be up to a slow start. Predictions looking less and less likely, but we'll see. Um, he has had one top five at the Daytona Road Course last time, and now he has a win. So that's pre that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, so anyway, thank you all for listening to my winner spotlight on Christopher Bell. That's it for that one. And I want to just have a time to talk about something I haven't heard anyone else talking about. Is the Adam Stevens versus Kyle Busch conversation. Because Adam Stevens, is he winning right now between the, between the two? This is going to be, I said that, this is going to be an interesting conversation between these two all year. Because... News broke earlier that Kyle Busch was uh, basically walked out. Uh, Adam Stevens like walked out on Kyle Busch and basically quit on him. Kyle Busch wasn't didn't like that, and because he wanted some personnel change, and Kyle Busch wanted personnel change. Adam Stevens didn't want to do it. He said, "This isn't really going to work. I'm going," and he went went to Christopher Bell, and Adam Stevens has a win. Now Kyle Busch has a clash win. So let's. You know, who would you give the upper advantage to right now? Kyle Busch, who has, you know, he has a clash win. Adam Stevens, who has a real win, plus with a, not a rookie driver, but a new driver to this team, not really used to this stuff. Who would you give it to? I'll tell you who I give it to. I give the point to Adam Stevens right now. That Clash one doesn't mean anything to me as a Kyle Busch fan. You know, I that Clash fan doesn't that that that's a Clash win. It doesn't matter. But Kyle Busch was strong today in the road course until getting caught up in pit road stuff and incidents and then tires and then he got caught up in that last lap stuff. But watch Kyle Busch this thing all season. Maybe next week when Kyle Busch goes to victory lane, fingers crossed. We'll have another installment of the Kyle Busch versus Adam Stevens. So, just wanted to say, every time one of them wins or one of them does something, it's always going to be an installment here. And I'm going to keep track of it, see who wins. But I give the point to Adam Stevens this season. And then finally, I touched on it in the beginning. My thought on road courses. You'll have seven more of these videos on the road courses. Now, the seven road courses on the NASCAR season... I have been so critical on because I don't like the idea. I don't like road courses personally. I like the Charlotte, Roval, and that's about it. Indianapolis road course was pretty good, and that was good in the Xfinity Series, so I'm going to see how it goes in the Cup. 
I'm going to wait to give my total thought on this whole thing because we still have CODA, which is in March. And I'm not going to lie, I'm a little pumped up for CODA to see what CODA is going to be like. But is it going to be a disappointment? It might be. It's a road course. We'll see how CODA is. Um, there's a few uh, Indianapolis road course. Road America, eh. Eh. I, I'm not really that pumped up for it. Uh, Watkins Glen, Sonoma. Watkins Glen, eh. Sonoma, eh. That's really how I am with those two. So we'll see how it goes. But anyway, that is my thought. This road course, we're going to talk about that uh, right now. It's time for hit the cast or hit the brakes. Always, always in the comments down below, you guys can put what you want of the race. You can put if it was a hit the gas or hit the brakes and tell me why down there in the comments down below. This race had, the ending was exciting, the rest of it really wasn't. There was a few moments where it was exciting and road course races are not my favorite they don't generate they're not nascar in my opinion they're other sports that nascar like is trying to copy in a sense it's not nascar and that's where i stand on the road courses so for me this race needed that caution and that's sad so i'm gonna hit the brakes on this race hit those brakes pump them up don't let's hit the brakes on this road course at daytona experiment I didn't think the clash was that good. I didn't think this race was that good. The finish was stunning. Don't get me wrong. The finish was great of both races. I'm going to hit the brakes, and I'm going to give this race... Oh, I want to give it a D+, plus, but I'm going to be nice and give it a C-. minus. I'll give it a C-. minus. I'm going to be nice. It's early in the season. But C-, minus. hit the brakes. This race is just... Eh. Ugh. I mean, didn't get much out of it. Not a big road course fan. For me to support NASCAR's decision to have eight road courses, I'm going to need a B plus at one of these. And that we have not gotten that yet from NASCAR. So the racing so far hasn't been awesome, NASCAR. Let's hope at Homestead we can get our first one out of the seas for hit the gas and hit the brakes. We'll see. Let me know in the comments if you're hitting the gas or you're hitting the gas. Or if you're hitting the brakes, let me know. Thank you all for watching this video. I know it's a little late. I'm trying my best to get them out early, early, early. But it, this one's going to be a little late. Homestead next week should be pretty early, though. So there you go. Thank you all for watching. Have a fabulous day, everyone. Subscribe if you are new. Like this video, even if you've been a subscriber for, I don't know, we're almost a year into this. So if you've been a subscriber for almost a year, still turn that like button up. Thank you, guys. I... I love the support. Five away from 50. You guys know what we're doing for 50. We are going to do a sh um, shout-out, Q&A, all that fun stuff. 50 States of Sports premieres like this week. I got a second edition of the 50 States of Sports. You guys want to tune in. It's all on Alaska. It's a short one because Alaska is not really sports. But tune in. I will card the playlist right here. If you missed the 50 States of Sports, go check it out there. Thank you, guys. Peace.